Welcome to the season finale, the semester finale of the show. I'm Mr. Jennings, advisor here of the Cardinal at Canfield High School. And the episode you're about to see is very simple. It's about two things. It's about success and it's about failure. The first half of this episode is produced by my sixth period journalism class. And it's about success, the success of an idea. Our idea for this episode for the sixth period class was to uh, each group was was going to make a list, a list of the five places in our area that they love. It could be any five places. And then we swapped lists among four groups. And I took part in this too. I made a list and I, I swapped mine with one of the groups and I got one of theirs. And our mission was to go to at least three of the five places on that list and document uh, what we did and what we found and who we talked to. So in the first half of this episode, you're going to see um, those journeys and the success that we had in that mission. And then in the second half of the episode, you're going to hear about some failure. But first, success. Enjoy. Hello, everybody. Uh, Happy New Year. Welcome to our video. We got the squad in the car. We're on a little road trip now. But so for this video, we uh, we got five of Mr. Jennings favorite places and we're going to go to three of them, you know, get a little little video about them. But I think the main thing and which is cool about about this video is. I know all of us haven't been to all five of the places. I mean, right? Yeah, but, no, um, I don't, yeah, I don't so know. I think it's going to be really cool to experience and uh, catch a vibe at all of them. And, you know, give us our, give, we're going to give you your, our opinion on them and, you know, just make a video about them. So. Yeah, and we're going to start at Branch Street Coffee. And then from there, we're going to go to Poland for Ely's to go. And then from there, we're undecided either West Side Bowl. Or it's another coffee place, yeah, right? Yeah. So we're yeah. just gonna we're gonna go with it and, and uh, have some fun. So. Yep. Yep. Bye bye. All right. So uh, we just got into Branch Street Coffee, and our initial our initial thought is that it's like very aesthetically pleasing. It looks like there's a lot of work getting done. People yeah. people grinding. And you know, I mean, it smells great. You know, it's it's like a nice coffee cool. shop. Yeah. I think I think the main thing is just a lot of work being done here. If you if you want to get some work done, you gotta head to Branch Street to just dial in on some papers and, and all that. So we're gonna we might gonna go grab a coffee and uh, we'll let you know. We're gonna go grab a fan favorite coffee and we'll uh, we'll let you know how it is. Joshua here working hooked us up and we got some what's it what's it called it's a blood orange brown sugar latte yeah so we basically just kind of said give us your fan favorite and you know what's ordered most around here and he he said I got you so we're gonna get a few words with them after but you guys all ready to uh, taste this thing it smells like coffee it does, it does smell like coffee Ooh, I like that I don't know how to describe it yeah, I'm a, I'm a big tastes, coffee guy, so it's a little sweet, yeah. 
It was a little sweet. I'm not a big coffee fan, but, you know, it's all right. It's kind of unique. It's, it's definitely unique. That's a good way. It's um, not a normal coffee. It, it, it's better than a lot of coffee I've had, and I don't like coffee, so that's saying a lot. Yeah, so uh, it was definitely definitely a good good little coffee to grab. Yeah, definitely. Joshua, right? All right, you ready? Yep. All right, I'm here with Joshua. He works here at uh, Branch Street Coffee. So, how long have you been working here? I've been here about three years now. So, how would you rate your experience in the last three years? I love it. I honestly love working here. So, yeah, it's a good place to work. Good. And, you know, last question What makes this place so much different than other coffee shops? Well, I think it's a mix of two things. Uh, first thing being is that we care about people. We care about the people we work with, and we care about the uh, people who come in here on our business. And then the second thing would be that we care about the coffee. So we don't want to just serve any bad cup of coffee. We want to be the best cup of coffee that you can get in this town. Nice. All right, well, thank you. All right, we're outside of Ely's to go, the vegetarian restaurant. Uh, personally, I have not tried any vegan food have you guys neither have i no no so this is going to be exciting stuff uh as you could tell we lost a group member gavin had some family stuff to deal with so we're gonna go give it a try we're gonna go ask the lady what's the fan favorite to order we're gonna just kind of taste around feel the vibe of the place once again and uh, let you guys know yep well we kind of are gonna can we just like Well, you, you don't think you would want to interview? Just a few questions. We could ask you about the shop and stuff. Alright, we're here at Ailey's with Hannah. Um, how long have you been working here, Hannah? Um, since August. Since August. And how would you rate your experience working here? It's pretty fun. It's a 10 out of 10, honestly. Nice. So, how would you rate this restaurant and, you know, like, why it's so good compared to other restaurants maybe in the area? I feel like it's good because we're, you know, So we got some vegan chicken nuggets and a green smoothie that we're gonna try. So you wanna start with the smoothie? Yeah, we'll try the smoothie. Alright. It's actually pretty good. You know, honestly, I was expecting to just like spit it back up, but it kinda has like a little fruity. It taste is, to it's it. it's sweet too. Yeah, a lot of mango pineapple. Yeah, yeah. Mango pineapple. This is pretty, it's pretty good. So I'm big into chicken nuggets, and vegan chicken nuggets are definitely going to be interesting, so we're going to try them right now. We're going to go a little cold. They serve their food cold because it's to go, so cheers. cheers. Happy New Year. Honestly, don't taste that much. Yeah, not bad. Just some chicken nuggets. Just tastes like normal chicken nuggets. Pretty good. All right, for our final spot, we're at West Side Bowl. Heard they got great pizza, music, bowling. We lost a few uh, group members, but we're gonna go check it out. All right, so initial thoughts. I think we caught it on a bad day because it's really empty. But you know, I was here. I was here the the one Saturday, and there was people like everywhere. It was packed. You know, lights were off. Light. There was uh, crazy lights going on. Music playing. They got, they got uh, like ESPN on over there. They had the college games on. Yeah, no, definitely. I could see this place packed and having a great time. We kind of caught on a weird, weird day, but yeah, I mean, it's still the atmosphere, good music. We just ordered our pizza and we're uh, having a good time. <laughs> So I'm here with Carmen. Uh, he works here at Westside Bowl. So Carmen, uh, how long have you been working here? So I've been here four years. Uh, they were opened uh, about two weeks before I started. 
Nice, and how would you rate your experience working here? Oh, it's uh, one of my favorite jobs I've ever had. Um, a, lot of, a lot of fun, a lot of entertainment. The owners, laid back guy, uh, more charitable than I probably would ever be in my life. Yeah, and so what kind of makes this bowling alley unique and a little different than others in the area? So uh, he bought a space as a music venue first. It just happened to be a bowling alley. So, you know, there's always new acts um, and it's kind of a cultural hub when you're bringing live entertainment everywhere. So, you know, it's a gem. <laughs> yeah, so every, the, the, the workers here are just so nice. They're letting us spin a few rounds uh, yep. on the alley, so we're gonna get after it. <laughs> Gavin is about to hit a strike. Going in. Ah. There it is. <laughs> no, so definitely here, you could just feel a good vibe and a good time. Um, just from how it's decorated to, uh, you know, the music and bands, which we unfortunately couldn't see, but this place is definitely legit and uh, a good time for a weekend. Yep. For our segment of the show, we took the group suggestions and went to Calaveras in Austintown, Crybaby Bridge in Salem, and the Lily Pond in Youngstown. typically eat Mexican food but this restaurant I got a cheese quesadilla which I really enjoyed which doesn't usually happen and I don't know that makes this restaurant pretty special compared to the rest yeah so I got chicken tacos but I actually received beef tacos which is fine but they were pretty good I got the fish tacos which were really good and I normally don't get fish at a lot of places because sometimes I don't trust it, but here it was really good. When we went to Calaveras, we had the opportunity to speak with the owner and he told us about his experiences in working in restaurants around our area. And then he told us about the development of Calaveras, which he opened four years ago. He discussed how special the community and especially everyone in the surrounding areas and the support he has gotten and how it led to cre the creation of such a special restaurant for him. He said he really likes having his own business instead of like working with another company since he did that prior and he just likes making his own decisions and doing whatever he wants with his own company. So the service at the restaurant was really good. Our waiter was really nice and always checked in at our table to see if we needed anything and the food came out really quickly. Overall we had a really good experience at this restaurant and we are really glad it was suggested to us by another group in our class and we recommend it to anyone else who is looking for somewhere to eat. Thank you.
All right, guys, we made it to the first location, the Arms Family Museum. We came here before Christmas time, so there are a lot of Christmas decorations. Can't wait to see you guys. Let's check it out. So the first place we decided to visit on our list was the Arms Family Museum. And as we said previously, we visited this before Christmas, so the place was completely decked out in decorations for the holiday season. So the museum had a defined walkway for visitors to travel through to see all through the different rooms and travel throughout the entire museum. The museum also had three separate floors, each with its own different rooms, and the top one, which we're going through here, is not decorated for Christmas. So a little bit of history on the Arms Family Museum. It was built in 1905 and it was used as the Arms Family Automobile Barn. It was used like this until 1961 when it was given up to the Mahoning Valley Historical Society by all of F.A. Arms. So the Arms Family Museum is located on Wick Avenue in downtown Youngstown, and it's open 12 to 4 all week. So to finish off our tour of the Arms Family Museum, we took a trip to the downstairs level where we found different activities such as face painting in the corner and as well as pictures being taken in a sled. There was also a separate building in which people could purchase different items and many other decorations for the holiday season. So next on our list, we visited the Amish Market, located off South Avenue and Matthews Road in Boardman. It's open from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Thursdays through Sundays. It was originally known as the Valley Marketplace in 2013, but then in 2017, it was fully Amish-owned and operating, giving it the name the Amish Market. It offers 15 Amish vendors inside the store, such as furniture and furnishings, decor, uh, fresh hot and cold foods, baked goods, store section, and uh, multiple restaurants inside. So this was the first time that I personally visited the Amish market, and I can say with certainty that this was, that it definitely exceeded my expectations. The building itself is massive, and they have so many different items and food for customers to buy. Alright guys, we just finished up at the Amish market, we got some food, different items. I got two donuts, one Oreo, one just regular blueberry. Uh, gonna try them out here pretty quick, pretty soon. Um, what'd you right. get? Um, so I got some donuts too. I got a maple bacon, a maple cream stick, and then like a cherry donut. But... I got a cinnamon roll. It's gigantic. And uh, yeah. I got a garlic pretzel. And then we also got uh, some other food too. Yeah, we got some lunch here. I got like uh, some bone-in wings and mac and cheese. Yeah, they have a lot of options for food desserts and pretty much almost anything you can yeah. find. It's a really here. big market. You can find all types of, I mean, they have, they've got a- It's all on the show. Yeah, they have yeah, hot ready food so. or they have, you know. It's only open some days of the week, but I mean. Really yeah, it's got open got from Thursdays market, and Saturdays. Fruit, baked Saturdays. goods, coffee, coffee was great. Right coffee was really coffee, good. Yeah. Um, I think one thing about this place is that it's pretty cheap. Like you're not gonna find these prices pretty yeah, much yeah, anywhere yeah. else. For the amount of food that we got, it's not that bad. Yeah. To escape the inflation, you should come here. So to round off our list, we decided to visit Cast Iron Soda Works, located in downtown Salem on East State Street. It's closed on Sunday and Monday, but then Tuesday through Thursday it's open 2 to 9, and Friday and Saturday it's open 12 to 10. 
The place offers free board games, free Wi-Fi, and plenty of soda. So we were actually able to get an interview here with the manager and we were able to ask him a few questions regarding the band. Okay, so who are we here today with? Uh, I'm Jade McFarland, I'm the manager here at Cast Iron Soda Works. And how long have you been working here for? Uh, I've been working here almost since the beginning. We've been open about a year and a half. I've been here somewhere in that ballpark. Alright, and what's probably your like favorite soda here? Uh, I say, I can't really categorize them into favorites. I have a favorite in each category, but since I've tried almost the entire wall, it's very difficult to just outright pick a favorite. And how much sodas do you guys have here? Uh, on the wall, we have in the realm of about 500 or so different sodas. Uh, throughout the lifespan of our business, we've probably burned through about 700 different types of soda on the wall. Okay. And what's probably like the worst or like your least favorite soda option? Branch. It's probably one of the worst, which is ironically the best-selling point yeah. for it. Um, you have no idea how much ranch we have sold just off of Yeah, it sucks. That is, it. that is pretty phenomenal. Uh, so what's your favorite part of working here? Uh, just the environment. I love interacting with people. It's things like this that really help me flourish as a person. I love the interaction, and it's just been my favorite job so far. So what made like the history and like startup for like the chain here? So, from what the owners have essentially told us and have said on the air more often than not is that there used to be an antique shop back where they lived in Indiana. It's a nice little place called Antiqueology. Uh, their soda wall wasn't as large as ours particularly, but it was a nice little soda shop for their kids to go down to, uh, hang out, grab a couple sodas, ride their bikes around town, and just have a good time. What would you, what are some things that you would recommend for like people who have never been here? Uh, our cast iron root beer, first off, it's our house made root beer, we make it in house. Uh, float it up, why not? Like, it's probably best <laughs> yeah. with a float because that's kind of how we cater things. Uh, any blue thing for a kid, great. All of our <laughs> blue stuff are great options. And just, yeah. Great, well, thank you for talking with us today. So. All right, thank you. So that wraps it up for today's video, guys. We hope you guys enjoyed it as much as we did, and we will see you guys next time. So the first place we chose was the Butler, which is an art museum. We've all been there and we think it's a good experience everyone should have. It's free and it's really pretty. All right, and then our next place that we said was Gio's Vinyls and Music Shop. It is in downtown Youngstown. And regardless if you buy vinyls or not, it's still something like really cool to go see. Like, and you could buy a vinyl, you could see the old music they have. I don't know, something really cool you would get to experience. The third place was Cranax, which is a bit further away, but because it's like Christmas time, we figured like it would be good. Not only is it like an experience, but it also has like a store attached to it. So it could just could be fun to like go look at it and stuff. The next place we chose was Prest. Um, it's also in downtown Youngstown. It's right by YSU. And it's just like a little coffee shop and it has like a lot of good like breakfast foods and like waffles and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It's really cute. And then our fifth place was the Mocha House. It is also in downtown Youngstown or it could be in Poland or Warren, whichever location you want to go to. But it's basically like kind of like a cafe where you can get bre breakfast, lunch or dinner. And there's also a bakery and it has really good food and it is definitely somewhere everyone should go. Hi, welcome to our first stop of the day. It is pressed coffee bar and eatery. experience at Prest and Prest is like a local coffee bar and cafe kind of vibe to it and it's located on the YSU campus and they have things like coffees, teas is what they specialize in 
and um, they have a bakery section and other breakfast and lunch items to offer. Yeah, uh, so when we went there, we all got something to eat. Uh, I don't think any of us got coffee though, but we did try the food. Mm -hmm. um, I got a wrap, I thought it was pretty good. Um, yeah. yeah, I got a panini and it was really good. Um, the only thing was like the prices were kind of a lot. Everything ranged from like eight to nine dollars on like the food menu, but other than that, it was really good. Mm -hmm. I got grilled cheese and I thought that it was really good. <laughs> I got Mallory and I got the same thing. We both got a panini, and I think we all thought the food was good. We ate all of it, so <laughs> that's a good sign. And I would go back. I've been there. Um, times before but I would go back again. I go back. Too. I go back. If you're going to YSU it's a nice place to get lunch on campus in between classes. Yeah. Yeah. So our next stop is the Butler Art Museum. saw was the Butler Art Museum and some facts about the Butler is that uh, in 2019 they actually celebrated a hundred years um, that they've been open and for all the time that the Butler Art Museum has been open it's been free entry which is really nice we had no problems getting in there or anything and um, also it's the first um, museum in our country to be completely dedicated to art so a lot of people refer to it as the Museum of America that, yeah, and that was like my first time ever going. I've always like heard about it and like took pictures outside of it, but I've never been inside and I didn't realize like how much like cool art was actually in there. Like I didn't realize how much they had to look at. And, yeah. yeah. It's also like really pretty and well laid out in there. Yeah. So, <laughs> it, was really, it was really nice and clean in there and I thought that it was all displayed very well. And the staff there was also really nice and was showing us some cool things about the museum. And they also hold um, events all throughout the year and different kinds of classes and they have a popular Christmas attraction there so there's something for everyone. Yeah. There's roughly 20,000 pieces at the Butler Art Museum so you should really go check it out because there's a lot to see. Very cool too. Here's our last stop, the Mocha House.
went to was the Mocha House um, on Boardman Poland Road, like by Chick Fil A and all there. And we went there, got pastries. Um, a little bit about it, it opened in 2002. There are three locations. There's one in, in Youngstown, one in Boardman, and one in Warren. Everything was really good. <laughs> we didn't try any of the food because we had previously had our lunch at Press. But yeah, we all got really good pastries. I got um, raspberry cheesecake with chocolate chips and it was really good. And it was really, I was expecting it to be a lot more, but it was only $5. Yeah. Uh, I got an Oreo bar, which was like, it's vanilla cake with like Oreo in the middle and whipped cream on the top and it's covered in chocolate. And it was really good and it was huge too. Like I was able to take it like more than half of it home and it was only $4.50. Uh, me and Kate got penguin rolls, which are kind of like ho-ho things and they were really good. It was only like, like $3.50, so it was nice. Yeah. And we also had um, a short interaction with, I don't know if he was the owner of it or just someone <laughs> who worked there, but he was this really kind man and he just um, thanked us for coming out and was just really nice. So that was also a good part about it. Yeah, um, a nice part of it about that place is you can go and get really affordable meals, like even dinners included, anything that like lunch, dinner, breakfast, dessert, it's all really affordable and the shop itself is like a very welcoming place. Mm -hmm. It's very nice, like there's like low colors, I don't know, it's like it's just a very comfortable place to be. Yeah, it felt very inviting and I definitely see myself going back for dinner. Yeah, the menu, there was a lot of variety on it, so I'm sure you would find something that you liked there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hey everybody, I'm here with Mika May, We're sitting in front of the Christmas tree, hanging out, and we wanted to introduce our video. Um, we got our list from Enzo, Sammy, Gavin, and AJ, and they gave us um, this, you'll see here. And I wanted to do something a little bit different because when I read this list, I realized it's um, kind of impossible um, sometimes for us to be able to get out of the house and go anywhere, even to see our family and friends, um, let alone go to um, any place that we might want to go just to have a fun time. So um, sometimes going to a place like The Bunker, uh, while I would love to go there, and I even got new golf shoes for Christmas, um, it's tough. Isn't that right, Mika May? It's hard. It's hard to go anywhere because we have to take care of you and Adelaide. So because, um, uh, because I can do whatever I want, I decided to interpret this list in a way that worked for us. So what I realized is a lot of the things that are on this list are, um, in a way, things that we kind of do ourselves here at home. So as you watch this, you'll see us um, making food and jumping just like we would if we went to extreme air. Um, while we are not going to Chuck E. Cheese, we're definitely gonna play some games and you'll see what those look like. And we're gonna, we're gonna play some ball toss, some, some bag toss. We're gonna play a little scavenger hunt. And even though we're not going to a salon, um, Adelaide herself has a salon of her own here and she's going to do my makeup, do my hair. So all of the things that were on this list we found were possible just in our own living room. And now you get to see what it's like to live inside the life of one of your teachers um, for a night um, because we're people too and this is what it looks like. Okay, what else do you want to eat them? 
no. Want to eat? Okay, I'm gonna do this. Dad, do you want? No, baby, do you want this? Yeah. What are you making? This. I mean this. What's this? It's um. A, this. Is that a bun? No. Almost done. Almost done. Almost done. Done. My teapot is in the living room. The, the teapot is in the living room. The teapot is in the living room. We're going on a hunt for the tea kettle. Where? Where? Where is the tea kettle? Is it with all of the presents? No. Is it mixed in somewhere? No. no. Are you seeing it? No, I can't. I can't. Is it under? I really can't. Is it under the mat? No, it's On the not. mat, on the mat, on the mat. On the mat, on the mat. Dad, dad. On the mat. On the mat. Where do you think it's going to be? <laughs> I think it might be out here, out here, or out here, out here. Yeah. Do you think we're ever going to find it? Yeah. The I'll be on anything with you. Then let's throw some balls. All right. Bell, toe, bell, toe. Go ahead. You ready? Fire away. Oh, try again. I will. Then let's do it. Go for it. Now your turn. Now bed toss. Okay, let's do it. Go. Whoa. Oh. Teddy Ben Dada. Hi, Ben Dada. Dad, you, Dad, you have to do it. Oh, did he? Dad, let's do some oh. things. Go ahead. Oh, you nailed it. Yay! Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yay! Are we going to do jump rope with this? What do you want to do with it? Pick up rope. Rainbows. Hold this side. Let's pick up rope. Come, then let's pick up rope. Um. What will be? Turn on the head, Tom. Bring up the monos. Bring up the bag on the bag on the bag. And two monos. Play with the bouncy ball. And I'm, I'm two D. <laughs> that out tooting. Tooting and dumping. Tooting and dumping is the best. Tooting and dumping is the best. It's the best when I'm dumping. <laughs> What color are we doing them? Pink. Okay. Okay, let me do your nipples. Okay. And then pick this up a little bit. Okay, let me do your nips and nipples. Put some perfume right here, right here, Thank right you. here. Okay, and then I'll and then I'll do your hair. You gonna do my hair? I don't have much hair to do, do I? But, but I, I have an idea. I can do your makeup. 
That was the makeup bus. That was the mm. makeup bus. There it is. Oh, okay. Here we go. Oh. Thank you. That's Should I look? I'll look in the mirror. No, that I have go. to do this. I have to do this. Okay. Hey. And now let's do eyebrows. Oh, my eyebrows. Yeah. I haven't got my eyebrows done in a while. How about we, how about we buzz my hair? Okay, I'll buzz your hair. I'll buzz the buzzer? Your... All right. I'll do the buzzer. Hey, what's the name of your salon so everybody knows? Um, it says shoing, 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 shoing. Okay. Never found that tea kettle, huh? No. Yeah. Yeah, sweet. So now we've reached the second half of the program. Uh, the original idea for my fifth period class was to conduct a tournament. We wanted to figure out who was the best prime time in the entire school. So we uh, devised a, a tournament of games. We were going to do, I think, six games. And we made brackets and everything that you can see here. And we asked every single prime time if they wanted to participate. Uh, about half of them said they were going to. And we, we had the framework for this tournament uh, all set up. But what happened was... We failed. 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 So it turned out we might have bitten off a little more than we could chew. We ran out of time. The Christmas break was in there. And the semester's end just kind of made it difficult to have prime times where things were, where time was available to make sure this tournament could play out. Um, so, yeah, we failed. But it was a good idea, and we're not ashamed of trying it. But we had to make the best of this situation. We had to do something. And what we did was we decided to talk about failure and how failure affects us. Okay, so it was sophomore year, and we played Warren G. Harding for the league title, and we lost on a buzzer beater. Yeah, so last baseball season, we kind of came up short of our goals we wanted to. Uh, we lost really early in the tournament, and I think that was the main, you know, like, opened my eyes that it was a time we failed and we had high ex high expectations and it just didn't come out the outcome we wanted. If I were to think about failure, um, what comes to mind initially is once I got my administrative degree, uh, numerous interviews I went on to, to step into administration and numerous times feel like you're doing great and then you don't get the job and you know got to a point where it brought me down like yeah, I had been on enough interviews that and them saying no like should I even be doing this should I did I take pick the wrong path you know should I just stick to what I was doing and, and stay where I was or is this just you know me being tested on you know do I have it in me you know and you know so I there was a big time there that I that I felt like I was failing I learned that it doesn't just come down to one play it like goes throughout the entire game so you can't like blame the whole game on one specific person it goes like through like the entire place yeah I learned a lot of different things you know I learned like can't get ahead of yourself um, and you know you just got to stay focused one thing at a time I learned that when you fail you are in an experience you've something has happened and somewhere down the road either you or someone else might need whatever you learned in that moment through that i learned that hey man one person's going to say no someone else is going to say yes i and i kicked and screamed and fought and you know and i end up here i mean so 
what if I'd have got the first job? I'd have never ended up here, you know, and this is a fantastic place to be, um, to be an administrator in, in this district is a blessing. Obviously it made me sad, made me feel like a failure because I put everything into that game and I think a lot of the team did too and I don't know, I think we, we were, we're better for it, but it still sucks. <laughs> like, I think, you know, it made me sad for, for a good amount of time and uh, uh, just like, affected daily life but get over it at a point it helped our whole team because i think it brought us together as and it helped us bond more and come together as a team um and it helped us get better because we know that like if we wanted to play them again we had to like be better to win uh i think it helped us just not me and the team this year uh we got something to prove this year we're gonna we're gonna come out and uh you know focus one game at a time but big goals now from from experiencing that that failure prepped me for when it was time to interview for for this job and I was ready so I was able to you know get the opportunity to be here with y'all um, I lost the AAC championship the seventh grade really good game but we didn't come up on top once I got a really bad grade on a biology test not only did I have to prepare physically but also mentally and uh, I don't know just learn to play more. Learn that I need to better prepare and study harder. It's positive because it made me want to work harder for next year and then we ended up winning and negative because obviously I wanted to win the game. Um, it was negative because at the time I was really sad that I got a bad grade but it was positive because I learned in the long run that it's really important to study and prepare properly for tests. Yeah, I feel like not everyone can win everything. You have to fail at least one time in your life. Yes. Okay. okay. Um, I was a failure in my dad's eyes when I didn't go to college right after high school. Um, so that's one thing. Um, I learned from that failure. Um, by working in the real world for two years and decided that I do need to go to college. So I guess I accomplished that goal for him and me. So that's how I fixed that failure. <laughs> um, uh, but for me, I mean, failing is when you set a goal for yourself. So for example, I ran my first half or full marathon two years ago and my goal was to finish in four hours and 15 minutes. I did it. Finished in like four hours and 30 minutes. Big deal. I didn't feel like that was a failure because I accomplished running a full marathon that I've never done before. So I guess it just really depends on who you ask. Um, yeah. In school, failure is based on the standards that we put on students so you can consider failing a test to be a fail but I don't think that that means you're a failure though. Tell me about a time where you experienced failure. Uh, I'd have to say uh, I think it was sophomore year uh, I lost a race to Ryan Bennett and he took my my spot on varsity for the uh, the upcoming postseason in cross country. And what did you learn from that failure? Uh, I have to run faster because if I <laughs> if I had done that, I would I would have beaten him. And how did you failing in a race with Ryan Bennett affect you? I started running faster. <laughs> 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 I, I increased my speed. Okay. Significantly, I'd say you have to use it as motivation. You have to like, you have to really uh, reflect on yourself, be introspective, and realize it's your fault. You know, you lost, and people don't care about your excuses. You know, so like. Just stop. <laughs> just bleep it. Just bleep it. Just stop being a loser, and and then from there, yeah. If you succeed, then it's like a good little sob story to throw in, like when you are like successful. Like if you're in the Olympics and you have some sad story from like middle school, like that's the goal. That's what you want. Well, I am in calculus right now, and it was a test on antiderivatives. And I'm not very good at calculus, so I failed. I learned that I'm not good at calculus, again. Um, I learned that 
I'm not really good at math. <laughs> and that's basically it. I wish I didn't fail. <laughs> I wish I was good at math. <laughs> I got in trouble when I... Well, okay, right, when I, I thought that was a <laughs> not, when I experienced failure. Um, it's hard to pinpoint in my like recent life a specific time. And that's not to say I don't fail, that's just to say it's hard to pinpoint that. I can think of instances where, you know, maybe you're a teacher and the you just have a bad day. Mm -hmm. and you mess up a lesson or you confuse the kids because you've delivered it poorly. I can think of things like that, which could be a failure. Mm -hmm. um, I think, I'm not answering your question, we're deviating a bit. I think if you, uh, if you try to have like a growth mindset, it's mm -hmm. not really like a failure, it's like a setback. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, speaking on that, um, what did you learn from failures of that nature? Well, when I've had issues with school, uh, like I said, if I've messed something up or confused kids or been unclear or whatever, uh, I feel like I've learned that a lot of the times what I consider to be a failure no one else cares about. <laughs> um, or what I consider to be a failure and it gives me a lot of anxiety or it stresses me out. Um, again, like, I don't want to say no one cares about it, but it's not really a big deal to other people. You know, right. We get in our heads about that stuff. Mm -hmm. So for my part in this episode, I talked to some members of our staff about some of their failures in their lives, and you'll also get to see some of the things that might go wrong along the way when doing the work that we here in the journalism class do. My sophomore year, when we were playing, it was like we were in the district semifinals and we lost. And that was like a big thing because it was the, I think that's the shortest we've ever gone for soccer wise. So that was pretty bad. So what happened next? Did you, did you use um, that as a team to? Yeah, cause then the next year we were like, oh, well, we want to win districts this year and like do way better than we did last year. So it kind of pushed us and urged us to do more. One time when I was 10 years old, I didn't make my travel team. And then that made me want to strive to be better. And I ended up playing them again a few years later and I beat them. Um. <laughs> wow. That was a failure. Oh I couldn't, words couldn't even come out of my mouth. I was just like, I was trying to say that. Mia, biggest journalism failure. Um. Our very first project when we went to White House, um, probably like the best, the best segment in my opinion, mm. um, except towards the end when someone told me to tell everyone to bring their kids here, even though we're all in high school and no one has kids, and it sounds really creepy. Whenever I studied really hard for a math test, I studied for like five hours and I got a 34%, and um, and then I retook it and I got a 35%, so I consider that a fail. I got my license for the first time. Well, the first day I had my license, I hit a mailbox and I broke the mirror off my car. And it was a $400 fix, and it was a really big failure. One of my only failures in life. <laughs> I'd say this year in pre-calc especially, um, I failed a test for the first time, I got a 51%, and I'm usually like a straight A student, so getting a 51% on me, getting a 51% did not go over well with me, and it kind of made me realize like, oh, like I'm not that good at school, but really it's just like one subject, and it's, 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 it's not the end of the world. I was at the Chick-fil-A drive-thru, and then I saw in my rear view mirror, I was like, wow, the guy behind me is going really fast. And then he just hit me, and I was like, that's not good. And then, so I put my car in park, and I thought he put his car in park. I get out of my car, and he's like blind, like almost completely blind, like can barely see. Oh. And he hits my car again. And I was like, so we call the police officer, and then she comes, and she asks me about my insurance, and I don't even know what that is at the time. So I just give her this whole envelope and 
she's like, okay, have a good day. And my car's like completely smashed like in the back. I'm like, it's fine. Uh, at least I'm at Chick-fil-A. It could be worse. So that was the best case scenario was me being at Chick-fil-A. And then it's my turn at the drive-thru and she's like, hi, how are you doing before you start your order? Like, I just want you to let know we're all out of chicken nuggets. And I was like, uh, not my junior year, but my sophomore year, we were, it was the game before the regional finals and we were playing Hathaway Brown and I got concussed like a couple games before then and we knew like the whole season that Hathaway Brown was going to be like the team to beat and um, I, I forget what my, I had like a specific role, like I was supposed to like face guard someone I think and then I got concussed and I couldn't do it and so I just had to watch from the sidelines as like everyone like everyone else was like playing in like the one of the biggest games of the year and I, I did feel like kind of a failure and then we lost too. My junior year I got concussed again during playoffs but I was able to come back for the last two games of our season. Um, those last two games were like definitely the best games that I've ever played. So uh, we were in West Virginia for a wrestling match. Um, we had five matches the day before, went well, and then my uh, second match of the second day came around. Uh, I straightened out my leg, the kid fell on top of it, and uh, my knee snapped down. I thought I was all right, and I tried to get back up, and then uh, it started swelling up, so I got moved to the medical table. And about a week and a half later, I found out I tore my ACL. I went and got, I got my hair done, right? And she like way overtoned it, so it's like dark blue, like blue. And I was going for blonde, so I'm like, this isn't working. Oh, so I go back and get it fixed. She puts a yellow toner to fix the blue. It's just red. So I'm like, this also isn't working. So I have to go to a different salon, and then she fixes it, and she's like, your hair's dead. It's fried. You need to cut it. So now my hair's short, and it's gross, and it's not even the color I wanted. So that's where we're at. Bell. Another fail. If you know me and you've been in the car with me, you know I really can't drive. I should not have a license. Um, I've had three tickets. I've been to court twice. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've had like multiple warnings. I've crashed my car two times. Um, and you're still here. I am still here, amazingly. Right. It surprises me every day, you know. <laughs> my boyfriend actually doesn't let me drive, even my own car, because he just doesn't trust it. He thinks we're gonna die. Um, any passengers have described me as being in the trunk of the car in front of me when we're driving because that's how close I tailgate. <laughs> Um, every time I get in the car, I have a set speed limit. It's like I'm automatically on cruise on 45. It doesn't matter what street I'm on. <laughs> it can be a 20. I'm going 45. <laughs> so there it is. We had some success. We had some failure. And we thank you for joining us through those successes and those failures. Um, one thing I learned and have um, learned from doing this this class and teaching for a long time is we should... Never be afraid of a good idea. Don't be afraid of that idea failing. It's the trying that matters. When we try, that's when we're going to learn, and that's when we're going to have fun. Um, so again, we appreciate you watching the show. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll be back next semester with a whole new cast, and uh, hopefully you'll be here with us too. Bye.